Listo. Listo. Simon say, what to it do? It's your boy Chingo Bling. This is Chingo Chats, our other show, the non-political show. We have producer Rob in the building. Hello, everybody. Sass, the best podcast producer in the game. I try. I try. I had to pawn everything, man. I said, man, we got to get Rob on the, <laughs> on the motherfucking squad. Uh, this is Chingo Chats. Leave your politics at the door. We just knocked out a super fire episode of Red Pill Tamales. Please go check that out. It is under attack. Our yeah. last our last episode got taken down from YouTube, which is owned by Google. YouTube. So, so uh, just beware. We may have to be, uh, I guess, going to other platforms. You know, it's harder and harder for an American and his free speech. We're already treading lightly. You know, it's just now you really have to pay attention about what you say. Make sure the the uh, AI and the other intelligence within these uh, softwares and platforms don't pick up on something that they classify as misinformation misinformation anything that goes against the regime so uh Mex mexican americans i'm losing a little bit of faith in y'all but guess what there's hope because i know the the few that do spread the word and tune in i, I know most are over there worried about critical race theory with john Leguizamo. they run around being victims but everybody's paying attention to freedom and what's going on in this country i have faith in you spread the word uh, but yeah, this is Chingo Chats. This is where I prove to y'all that we're not queuing on crazy Trump tards, where we actually have opinions. Half the time. Half about the time. other things. And I'm a stand-up comedian, and I cannot wait because the tour is literally now. It is like no longer around the corner. Three days. Three days from now, I will be in Raleigh, North Carolina, February 27th, kicking off the Legalized Freedom Tour. You do not want to miss it. McAllen, Texas, March 5th. Naples, Florida, March 16th through the 17th. West Palm Beach, April 3rd. Tacoma, Washington, April 7th. Nashville, Tennessee, April 14th. Corpus Christi, May 5th through the 7th. Arlington, May 12th through the 15th. But just go to the website. We also have New Braunfels, Abilene, Lubbock, Bryan, San Angelo, Odessa, Austin, Albuquerque, El Paso, Irvine, Ontario, Denver, Oklahoma City, Chicago, Phoenix, San Jose, Brea, Oxnard, San Antonio, Addison, and soon to be added, Las Vegas, Salt Lake City, and Houston, you do not want to miss it. Legalized Freedom Tour. We called it that for a reason, man. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm seeing more and more how important it is for people to hear that message because it feels like if you say it, people are like, what freedoms? What Where? freedoms have we lost? Where? Bro, it's just a mask, Who's bro? losing freedoms in 2022? <laughs> what what place? What country? I don't know. Dude, just, just get your take your medicine, wear your five masks. Take five jabs. Jabber job. Jabber job, man. You're free, bro. Dude, I don't like masks either, bro. This is what we have to do. And it's because people like you that are so jab hesitant. That's why we can't get back to our normal lives. And the politicians are nice. They're going to give us all our freedoms back as soon as you comply, bro. See, RPT is all politics. Chingo Chats is like 50-50. Yeah, 50-50. We talk about entertainment, but we always got to bring it back to politics because in today's world, unfortunately... Everything has a political aspect to it. At least in the beginning, man. I just had to touch on that so y'all can go check out that RSS feed for Red Pill Tamales. Uh, if you're not a member of the Discord, if you're not a member of the Thea, you're missing out. What you do is you go to patreon.com forward slash Red Pill Tamales and you can support the growth of the podcast direct. Or you could just go watch The View and just regurgitate <laughs> everything Whoopi, a.k.a. Uh, Jabba the Hutt, got to say to you. Jabba. J -j -j Jabba. So today's Thursday. We've uh, completed our first challenge. I got to go back into the spreadsheet and see who won it, who actually had yeah. the most weight loss. I'll, I'll do it uh, here th throughout the show and, and check. But we're starting the next one right away. So we had talked about doing a body fat percentage one. And then we were chatting in the Discord uh, today, this morning. And I thought, let's, let's combine the two because odds are... I'm sure a lot of people participated that didn't actually like submit photos and put their numbers in the spreadsheet, right? And that's fine. That's great. I didn't even do the spreadsheet. Well, I put it in for you. But oh, regardless, thank you. Sir. Thank you. Uh, others are just listening along every week after week and, and doing it, which is great. But those that really want to, there's going to be the top two winners of this is the challenge. You and I agreed on body fat, but for those that can't find a Dexo around them or they can't go, it's too expensive or whatever, I understand. We're going to do 12 pounds. That's my excuse. I got to wait till after the tour kicks off, then I'm going to go get a Dexo. We're going to go do, go do it together. Not at the same time. No homo. No, we're not going to dex each other. No, Stop. No, 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 no. Stop that. Calm out. Calm out. Uh, 12 pounds, eight weeks, uh, and or the greatest body fat percent is lost over that course as well. Okay. So usually when you go to the one of these DEXA places, if you've never done it, you buy a package. Mm -hmm. So you buy your, basically your before and after. So you can use it whenever you want. Um, we went to different places, I think, last time we did it. But, you, you know, buy two 
and do your initial one and then however long we did we waited like a six months or a year like three years ago to do it just to kind of for the first time check it out how about you did you wait a year six like months? in between yeah. scans i can't remember it was a long time yeah, ago, it right? was probably yeah, it might have been closer to a year yeah mm -hmm. so that's the challenge uh we'll talk about it in the discord if you're in there but top two we'll have prizes uh we can't say what it is but you can expect to, to win something and it's really about just keeping up the momentum man everybody's done so damn good people are ready they're like Keep When's it going. The next one, yeah. Keep it going. The, the only little road, I guess the road hump is <laughs> you can excuse me. The road hump <laughs> the road. is you're gonna have to figure out the calipers or how to measure yeah. your, your body fat percentage. Right. Yeah, if you're gonna do calipers, have somebody help you out with the calipers. Otherwise, uh DEXA. Or there's the other one where uh the hydrostatic, where they put you in the pod and they put you underwater for a little bit. If you can find one of those, I I'd, I'd be just too that scared to fancy. do it. Yeah. That sounds very fancy. A little too much for me. Yeah. Uh, I've done the DEXA before. It's pretty cool. You get a lot of data, man. They show you like uh, your visceral fat. They show you how much fat you have around your organs, which is the most important marker, really. The fat around your organs, the fat up under, I guess the visceral fat is like up under your muscle. Mm -hmm. That's like right around the organs. Yeah. Um, and then once you go back, it, they they show you in the system like, yo, you lost, you lost 3% body fat. You, you dropped 10 pounds, so on and so forth. Uh, Juan Perez was uh, here in Houston. Uh, he's a comedian out of San Antonio. He was helping me put together a ton of content and TikToks. Um, I'm sure you see the fruits of our labor all over TikTok and, and, and uh, Instagram, things like that. So uh, I was getting concerned, man, because, man, he was he was not eating. I was like, bro, come on, man. You got to eat something. He's like, no, I'm good right now, bro. I'm just, you know, I'm just going to eat later. And I was like, it's like 9 p.m. You're going to pass out. His, uh, his stomach shrunk, you know? You get less hungry as you start, you know, dieting. I guess. I mean, I think a, a lot of people do the eat once a day only. Yeah. Like, I think even Jay Prince does that. And then, you know, it's it, I guess technically it's a form of form of intermittent fasting. Sure. I was getting scared. But, um, but yeah, man, uh, everybody in the Discord, you know, they putting in work. People hitting the weights, getting their steps in, drinking their water, supplements. Great discussion. Very positive. Because... Part of my grievances with the uh, Latino community, Mexican Americans specifically, hit it. Is not only are we not involved, you know, um, I guess in the political discussion, we're not very well versed and things like that. Also, health. A lot of us think it's cool to just drink fucking beer all day and have a big ass belly. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You can't fight. You can't run. Can't do nothing. You could barely get up. I know your woman ain't too happy. You know what I'm saying? Your cardio ain't probably ain't shit in the bedroom. So get with the winning team. Come on over and join the Discord. So shout out to these three, all right? Uh, we got uh, Juan Perez who lost uh, 14.6 uh, 14 pounds. We got two more just below that that uh, didn't put their last way in, it looks like. So there should be more. But uh, Mark Aguilar and Sir Greenbud also in the 14 plus pounds. Yeah, I could have sworn somebody lost 17 or something what like that. They? But yeah, er, psh, I man, I, I'm I'm probably like the biggest loser. I mean, the the worst loser. Like I didn't I didn't drop as much as everybody else. I think you lost like seven pounds, six or seven pounds. No, because I went back up. Oh, I don't have your last so one. So I'm here. like at a, uh, like I'm at like a. Hola, bebé. Me estás buscando. Quieres saludar? Ven, ven. Acá, acá está la cámara. Ven, 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 ven. Acá mira, saluda. Hola. Este es el podcast de papi. Ok. Ok, estamos grabando. No estás en la cámara. Estamos grabando. Hazte por acá. Diles hi. hi. Ahora diles bye. bye. Ok. <laughs> ahí te miro. Bye, ahí te miro después. She has a treasure map. That's my three major. Bye. Te quiero mucho. Bye. She just barges in. Bye. Tell them to subs subscribe. Join the Patreon. She did not. Okay, there. She closed it. But yeah, man, uh, it's 2022. I mean, the podcast is rolling. The tour is about to be rolling. We're losing weight. You know what I'm saying? Jiu-jitsu tonight. Oh, yeah. Um, you said you did a private. What, did you already do your first private? Or yes. how many have you done? Yeah, I did a private lesson uh, with my boy Andy. He's a brown belt. He's in my class. We did that last Tuesday. That was your first one? Yeah, well, we drilled. Well, we drilled like an hour before class. He was, He was, you know, just... Just going over some stuff. Let's practice these arm bars, practice these triangles. Might get into Oma Plata or however the fuck you say. Mm -hmm. That's right. And um, we didn't really get into that. 
And then, um, so it's like, damn, now I owe you, mm -hmm. right? I got to owe him the, the comedy consultation. So we met up yesterday at uh, Segundo, El Segundo Coffee. You been there? No, never. So it's in this building in Second Ward next to the Maxwell House uh, coffee shop. Well, it's not Maxwell House no more, but that was a landmark. Like, you know, I grew up on the southeast, you know, in Grand Ole Park. So obviously right around me, you have like Manchester, Magnolia. You got Pasadena that way. Uh, but that's like the whole southeast, East End, mm. Second Ward. Well, anyway, it's this really cool building. It's called Ironworks, right? Mm -hmm. And they have like containers in there. And it's like retail. And they have a coffee shop. And they have a nice meeting area. There's like a lot of places to sit. And there's like tabletops. So uh, me and Andy, we went over some of his material, man. He said he's only done like five open mics. Mm -hmm. But um, which open mics are tricky because he let me hear a recording. And I'm like... Honestly, bro, those rooms are tough. It's like the energy's low. Super low. It's just like amateur night. It's like mostly comedians. I was like, honestly, you probably could have pulled it off if it were like a better room. Mm -hmm. Like your, your material's not bad. You just got to polish up some things. So, yeah, we tightened up some stuff, went over a lot of like concepts and um, things that I've been taught, things that I've learned, things that I've picked up along the way, whether from an acting class or from like other comedians like Rick Gutierrez or... Midnight might tell me something. Javi might teach me something. I'm learning stuff from Bryson. Like everybody I roll with, you know, we exchange notes. We always give each other tags, good pointers. Like, hey, man, that act out was great. Dude, that facial expression. Or like, yo, when you did that character, they were dying in this, this back part of the room. So it was very productive, man. Um, you've had a lot of mentors. Has, is this the first time that you've actually had somebody where they kind of sought you out as somebody that could help with their development of comedy? Um. Because, you I know, mean, I, I've it, had uh -huh. arguably on the road, you're a mentor to the people that ro that roll with you. But I'm saying like this, where like, let's just say almost like what Rick was to you for a bit. You're mm -hmm. being to somebody else. Yeah, I think this is the first time. Good question. This is the first time that I actually have to like dust off the notes and try to like organize. How could I make this productive? How do I systematically almost like if you think about it, if you go into like a Muay Thai class, boxing, jujitsu, it's almost like. So do we begin with fundamentals? Like, where do we start? Mm -hmm. So I will say that this is like the first time that I treat it like a, um, a very like um, regimented, kind of like a formal, like bust out the notebook. Like, all right, here's, here's how we doing it. And it was fun. Like, yeah. I, I like, not that like, oh, I like being a teacher, nothing like that. But it really helps you when you're, when you're having to explain and articulate and teach it helps you brush up on your skills well you know that's always like the, the what they say right that those that teach you know they they master their craft more when they teach somebody else yeah because it, it forces me to like pull up my notes and explain like just in the in the best manner possible like um conceptually yeah fundamentals this is why i'd advise you do it this way or keep this in mind if you put that word here or like if you don't reveal that, yeah, the surprise and just concepts like uh, Jesus Trejo told me a long time ago, the metaphor of the balloon. Mm -hmm. Like when you're up there doing public speaking or, or you telling a joke or a story and you're on stage, you want to keep that energy up where you're like keeping them engaged and it's funny. There's tags and it's flowing and you're keeping the balloon up and there's never like dead air where it lags and you're like, oh, shit, uh, uh, that that punchline didn't land now i gotta try to get their attention and get the balloon right. back up so um what do you think you have the most carryover of that skill carryover what skill of of being able to like maintain the like the energy like do you think there was more carry out like if you were to perform music mm -hmm. is there as much like okay this part of a, of a song or performance isn't going that well and i gotta win the crowd back like maybe you might stop and you know you talk to the crowd directly versus in comedy where like you're trying to during a bit constantly keep that energy up is there any is there any crossover one for the yes. other yes i think i think it could apply to a musician let's just say a rapper right that's why it's important that a rapper has like a good dj mm -hmm. somebody that you're in tune with it's also important that a rapper have a good um set list and i'm, j I'm just gonna be specific with rapper because a lot of times that means you don't have a drummer you don't have a keyboard. well you're a rapper also that too right but i have I have had musicians before, but basically, um, if your set list isn't super tight 
and you're not in a, a good commu- sync. Commu- in sync with yeah. your DJ, then you're having to like, all right, you know what? Uh, you know, fuck that shit. Oh, DJ, hold on. You know, wait, wait, wait a minute. I said, you know, mm-hmm, are y'all mm-hmm. ready? Right. You know, Perfect example. No, nah, man, I don't think my ladies are fit. Mm-hmm. Hold on, man. Cut, cut. And you could make it, you could play it off and make it like an entertaining part of the show. Mm-hmm. But uh, but obviously with stand up and like public speaking, there is no DJ, there is no drummer. Like it's just you, and you can edit on the fly, if need be. Is that where uh, for some people you think crowd work kind of comes into play? Where if they have like a hiccup, they'll go to crowd work or no? Yeah, but but I don't think crowd work is a great example of like um, it, if the, if the joke doesn't work. Just go to crowd work. The reason I say that, it's it's because crowd work is such a specific skill to where you can make shit worse. In other words, it's, oh, it's, yeah. it's risky. It's kind of like telling a, a boxer who has weak, um, I mean, a, a striker who has weak ground game. It's like, if anything happens, take the fight to the ground. And it's like, what if he sucks at that? You know what I'm yeah, saying? So yeah. it's kind of like a doozy. It's, it's, it, crowd work is a lot harder than it seems. Yeah. <laughs> the only example I have of that personally was when I did, I was probably like 21, 2021, and at Warehouse Live, they have those open mics, which I don't know if they still do in the green room, that small room. And, you know, it was one of those days, it was one of those things where you're just driving there and you're like trying to polish bits or jokes you were working on that week or that day, and nothing's really come together because you don't know what the hell you're doing. But then, you know, I get up there and I, whatever it was, it was like a mushroom joke about something. And uh, at the time, I don't even think I'd done my first trip, or maybe I had just, whatever it was. What? Hold on. You done tripped off mushrooms? Yeah, man. We talked about this. How much? How much did you do? Two and a half grams. And that's what's a hero dose? Five. Five plus. Yeah. So what'd you feel again, real quick? Dude, it was life changing to this day. No oh, shit. Yeah. So how did it change your life? Well, so there's um, I always reference this, and I don't know if it's still available, but Ari has like the uh, mushroom, the mushroom primer of, of some, it's like if you've never done it read this and it's like the mushroom manifesto kind of thing where mm-hmm. this is what to expect this is what you should do these are my recommendations obviously it's coming from Ari Shafir, so take that yeah. with a grain of salt but uh try to be out for instance try to be out in nature try to be out you know in the wilderness try to be with you know with mother earth in the environment try to have no stresses on your plate try to declutter from what your re- responsibilities are that day and the next day and potentially the next two days so if you do it on a friday make sure that weekend you don't have uh, engagements you have to get yeah. to and things that you're really stressed yeah. out about because it could potentially lead to a bad trip, right? Okay. Cleared up the schedule, planned to just do this, was very focused on what was going on at that point in time in life, and uh, went with two at the time very good friends who are also who were very experienced at the time, which sounds crazy to say, but uh, they'd done it a couple of times and I felt safe. Again, you want to be safe with the people you're with, right? Almost like chaperoning you. And um, we went to this huge park out on our side of town. And we timed it just right to, to when we got there. Like it was just starting to hit because it hit pretty quick. Mm. And um, we started just kind of walking around the, uh, the park and one went one way. I went with another buddy. And all of a sudden you start seeing everything from another perspective. Like the the butterflies were like flying in like 3D around you. Right. And uh, even as we were pulling up and parking the glass, it's like you could see through the glass. Like you could see in the glass, like all mm. the molecules that made up the glass windshield. Right. The people not going to lie. They looked like aliens, right? And the story I always tell when, when people ask me about this one experience, really, is that there was a kid and his mom walking on a pier, and there was water. It was really nice, just a perfect date for it, too. He was walking with his mom, and his mom was kind of like on her phone, not paying attention to the kid. And you could, I could feel how the kid didn't have any, like he was, he had this angst, or he, he needed attention, right? He needed some kind of love. And uh, he was a little alien, and she was a big alien. Mm. And you could just feel this, you could literally feel the sadness coming off the little kid. Anyway, long story short, it was a six hour trip. Wow. And then to come off of that, and also you have to ideally go fasted into it so there's nothing else digesting in your body. Mm. So you're fasted for the last, you know, six, 12 hours. So it hits harder. It hits super hard. Luckily, it wasn't a bad trip because I'm not much for taking any kind of substances. And then coming down from that, we went to go have sushi after like, we walked around the park for like six or seven hours. In the park, went to a bench, walked around, sat at the pier, went back to a bench, went to a picnic table, walked around the park. Six hours. Then and we, all the whole time, you just seeing the whole time. It's just like your mind's just constantly going. You're thinking about things. You're processing mm-hmm. shit. It's unexplainable, honestly. Rogan has dozens and hundreds of videos, probably at this point, talking about it. But it's as accurate as he describes it. If it's not a bad trip, because I don't know what that's like. Mm-hmm. Then we go eat sushi, and we kind of come down from all that. And from then on out, like I still remember that day vividly. Like this was 10, 11 years ago, and I still remember that experience. And it was one of those things where like, 
life appre- maybe it was maybe it wasn't just that little kid that happened I happened to see that day, but it was just like this appreciation for like my situation in life in life, having two parents, having like a stable you know household, that kind of thing carried it throughout the rest of my 20s and still now in my that's early great 30s. yeah sorry to interrupt so you so you were your experience of doing an open mic yeah uh anyway it was like a mushroom joke and i think it was that experience that kind of like helped me form this idea and it didn't i mean off also there was literally five or six people in the crowd and then in the back of the room there was like 10 other comics who were going to go up or 10 other people that were at that open mic and more outside because the list of, of open micers it was like 50 deep i don't know how many go up in a night because mm. there's so many of them you just Put your name up. You don't. Not everybody goes, right? Mm-hmm. So the very first time I went, I didn't even get called. I was like, "Great!" I, I honestly, I was like, "I don't want to go up." Yeah. So that time, the the joke didn't land, and somebody said said something in the crowd to go back to the crowd work thing, and I whatever I had said was something about well, you've obviously never flipped a cow patty to find some mushrooms or something like that, and it got a laugh, and I was like, "Oh, like that." Write it down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, write uh-huh, that down, uh-huh. and it gave me that that idea of like, okay, that's how you kind of quickly try mm. to turn something around that doesn't hit. Yeah, so uh, one, one of the things in my notes is a 80-20, which obviously 80-20 rule applies to a lot of shit, but I use it as a reminder that 80% rely on your script and stuff that's like pre-prepared that mm. you know is like a battle-tested, mm. proven, like you know your tags, you know that story about the mushrooms always hits, whatever. 20% allow room for improvisation, mm. meaning... You know, you might have had a pre-planned idea of how you're going to first open up. Because a lot of times open mics, you're limited to like five minutes or three, depending on... It was three, yeah. Yeah, depending on the situation. But you might... When you go up there, you might be like, man, this is a weird space. I'm going to roast the room for like 10 seconds and then roast the front row because these are obviously like... I'm just going to say how they're soccer moms. They've never been out. They're drinking all the wine. Whatever you observe, right? To think on your feet. Or... It doesn't need, it doesn't have to be like improv at the beginning. Just allow space so that you don't turn into robo comic and you're just up there like and next on my script I will go into the part about you know <laughs> and you don't want to be so constricted by the script because the minute you get a heckler or the waitress drops the drinks or somebody walks in late you're just like I don't know how to address this situation. I came in expecting a super clinical, sterile environment where I was going to stick to my script 99% of the time, you know? (laughs) So, um, they asked me on, um, the podcast. I was a guest on the other day. It's called this and so much more. It's uh, my boy, Roly and his wife. They asked me, they were like, Hey, tell us about some times you bombed. And I was like, comedy or music? Uh, but there's a ton. I mean, there's a bunch, especially in the beginning, because I did one of those open mics at Warehouse Live, but it was like the small room next door. Mm. I don't remember it being a green room. But yeah, it was like mostly comics, very empty, very intimidating. And when you don't know what you're doing, you don't have confidence in your material, you have no guidance, and you go up there and you just suck. Yeah. You know, and it's painful. It's like, uh, why do dogs sniff each other's butts? Uh, imagine if humans did that. Uh, that's weird. Never mind. Moving on. What did the hamburger call its baby? <laughs> Patty. <laughs> oh. You'd have my soul dying, though, if that was there. Why did the cabbage, how did the cabbage beat the lettuce? Because it was a head. Oh, oh God. Oh. People find that shit funny. Oh. 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 Oh, tough crowd. Um, but yeah, man, I'm excited about this legalized freedom tour. I've been off long enough. And I think um I think next year I won't take as long of a break. We shall see. But uh working with my my boy Andy, that was very fun. Um I'm looking forward to like, you know, sitting down with Juan, you know, Juan Perez as well, you know, go over some of his stuff and just whoever wants to listen to me. Mm, yeah. You know, because I would love to um come up with like a system. You know what I'm saying? Well, they always say that you can't teach comp and, and hear, like, hear me I think out. that's bullshit. I but think you're right on. because I'm, I'm, I'm a visual learner. So if I could watch somebody like yourself or anybody, uh, give like, I always go back to the master class because they've really coined that, that name, that, mm-hmm. that, that, that whole system really well, but any kind of master class or a toast masters or whatever, where they teach you how to do that thing. I feel like you could really take a lot from it if you're that kind of a learner. Some people obviously it's not for, but you always hear Rogan rail on on that idea and, and other big comics that are like you can't take a comedy class and learn a lot from it. I totally disagree. So Rogan says that you can't. Oh, yeah. you can't be, can't be yeah. taught. Yeah, I think he's kind of lightened up on it because that re- it, re- it came up recently on somebody, and I think he may have 
whoever he was talking to was saying that I think either Gabriel or Iglesias or somebody else had taught a, a class for a little bit that was actually really beneficial to comics. They, at the they time. taught a class? I believe so. No shit. Yeah. I mean, Rick Gutierrez does it all the time. I mean, he sat down with me many times in yeah. many hotel lobbies, in his living room, in the green room, uh, before the HBO special, like many, many times, you know, drilling like attitude, energy, confidence. Uh, that's one of the things, um, you know, that I absorbed and included in my Bruce Lee plan. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I'm going to pass on. Um, but like you said, Toastmasters. Mm -hmm. I mean, there there are certain. I mean, think about it. Rogan learned. Right. It's just okay. Maybe somebody didn't sit down and, and like hold your hand or like pull out a notebook per se. But he learned in a different manner. Mm -hmm. He might have learned the hard way. And um, after I met with Andy, uh, I believe his last name is Van Hook. After I met with Andy, um, I felt re inspired to like. I was like, as soon as we were done, I was like, yo, I need to go listen to my old material, I like pull up some recordings, like recording from Salt Lake. Um, you know, stuff like that. Jot down my notes, figure out how I'm going to reorganize, edit, polish. What am I taking out? What am I working in? What am I going to beef up and flesh out? So I, I, I just got re-energized. I was like, yo, mm. a lot of these concepts, I need to apply this shit. I, I can't find who it was. It may or not have been Fluffy, but either way, it was somebody that who is now uh, very successful who had, had, had said that they had given a couple of comedy classes and even maybe taken... But uh, before we start recording, I asked you about what are you going to come out to this year, like to this tour. Yeah. What do you What are you thinking? So Rob was asking me about my coming to the stage game. Yeah. Which some of the best comics that have the coming to the stage game. Yeah. Cedric the Entertainer, Bernie Mac, Lou Nell, uh, Carlos Miller, Cat Williams. A lot of them tend to be black comics, mm -hmm. right? Because sometimes, like when it comes to there's different styles. A lot of times you're you're more like straightforward white comics and even Latino comics. A lot of Latino comics, you know, you know, they might come out real quick, the music's playing, they introduce you, cut, and boom, you start kind of going into your your material, right? Mm. I mean, I can't play clips because of fucking YouTube would ding it, but like Carlos Miller was performing. It's on YouTube. He was performing, um, at the Laugh Factory. It looked like the Long Beach Laugh Factory. It looked like. I, somewhere in L.A. It was a Laugh Factory. And D.C. Man, what's that motherfucker's name, man? D.C. Young, young D, D.C. Young Fly. D.C. Young Fly. Mm -hmm. Introduced him. Carlos Miller, he's a bad motherfucker with the stand-up. But before he even opened his mouth, he's just walking to the stage, and they're playing uh, Nate Dogg. It's a... 213, Snoop Dogg featuring Nate Dogg. And he's coming out, and boom, he's already got the ladies singing along. He's got all the dude. People start pulling out their cameras, and boom, he has them in the palm of his hand. After that, he could feed them whatever concepts, material, whatever jokes. He already won over the crowd. He has them in the palm of his hand. Um, I opened up for Lou Nell and Earthquake, and that was a clinic. I mean, shit, Lou Nell came out to 24 Carat. Nice. It, that song was brand new by Bruno Mars. So it took her like two minutes to even get to the mic and even say hello. But by then, people were partying. Mm -hmm. So definitely take notes from different styles. You know, don't just be constricted by one, one style. Like, yo, I just like Jim Gaffigan, and that's it. Right. Have you ever seen uh, any of the master class trailers like Steve Martin's? Uh, yeah, I, 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 I bought his. Really? Uh huh. How was it? It was all right. It was all right. Um, damn, there's a I know. It, it's, it's like it's an I electrical. touched something. No, it's the electrical cord. Okay, my bad. I touched something. Yeah. Um, I bought it. It was all right. I think you could, you could gain more from mine. Hey. Because uh, from what I recall, his thing was just kind of like about humor. And then one of the um, one of the like PDFs or links mm -hmm. that it had as additional resources was a link to a class I had taken ah. already, which was uh, a dude named Jerry Corley. I forget how I found him. I think I found him as on a YouTube ad, and I ended up flying to Vegas and taking this weekend comedic writing course. 
And so he, that dude, Jerry Corley, he talks about the 13 structures of comedy, of mm -hmm. like 13 structures of a joke. And then freaking Steve Martin had it linked. And I'm like, I could have just gone to that. You linking some other shit. But uh, Steve Martin, he's a, he's a, his story is amazing because, I mean, nobody took him serious. And then he became like the biggest name in comedy in the 80s. Do you remember what really like, because I, I don't know a lot of Steve Martin comedy, honestly. I, I know him and I know his like some of his writings, but I don't know much of his comedy. Well, you know any of his movies? Well, yeah, I guess his movies, obviously. So he was in a bunch of movies. So I think when he was really young, like a teenager, he went to work like at Knott's Berry Farm, one of these like theme parks. Yeah. And he was just one of these entertainers. And that's where he kind of started to hone the skill of like being in front of people, not being afraid to be silly. And he like played a banjo. He had all these random skills that he found a way to format it into a show. And at the time, he was being very avant-garde with his comedy. So he would do these things, right? Where he like broke all the rules and people were already ready and expecting to play along. So he he's known for like taking the entire audience at the end of the show, like, and and da 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 and, and thank you, this and that. And he's making them laugh. And now you, you, get up, get up, follow me, follow me, everybody, single file line, follow me. Walk out of the venue, round the corner to go get cookies. What? Mm-hmm. Just stuff like that. Like you never knew what to expect from Steve Martin. Wow. Yeah. So that that's kind of what he was known for. Interesting. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how the classes for uh, your boy work out and then vice versa, how your training comes along at the same time, your jujitsu. Yeah. So he, I ain't gonna lie. He was like, yo, this is good. He's like, this is a lot of stuff. He was just kind of like, man, I'm gonna take these notes. And because we were able to take his rough joke ideas that he didn't have a lot of faith in because mm -hmm. they didn't really seem to be working. But I was like, no, check it out. Boom. I was circling all the punchlines, like, boom, underline this. This is all set up. You got to distinguish between the setup and the punch. You already know this is a laugh. I'm telling you right now, I'm telling you right now, this is funny. Mm. This is going to work. This may get a chuckle. This is going to be a big laugh. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If you hit all, I was like, look at it. I was like, if you hit all these, you already ate laughs deep. You know what I'm saying? Right. Um, People might not know this, but man, Chingo's so like, anal and analytical about that kind of stuff <laughs> you know i'm serious like and it's good there's no other way to put it like you're very meticulous too about that stuff like when you're in the green room before a show and you've got your your notebook and you're, you're going over stuff do you listen to stuff still before your show you do not right before but yeah like the day of yeah. i'm out of town i might get on the treadmill pop on the headphones yeah like old sets and stuff yeah so but it, it's like and you can you can just kind of tell like if you're ever in the green room with yourself or something like that that you know there's there's a job to be done I'm about to go do that job and I need to make sure that everything's in order and you're setting yourself up for success. Right. So, and, and it's cool to see. And we actually talked about this a long time ago about like some kind of master class thing mm -hmm. that you could potentially do. And now that you've done this for the first time, you, your immediate thought was like, I could actually put together something that's of value to other aspiring comics, or maybe even, maybe it's not comics. Maybe if they just wanted to learn how to write better or form thoughts better. Yeah. And I'm not the best writer. Uh, I told, um, I told Andy that yesterday. I was like, bro, off top, I'm not the best writer, you know, but I'm going to give you some pointers and we might come up with some shit. Mm -hmm. I, I was like, I, I write, thank you. I was like, I write on stage a lot because I always allow room for improvisation. Right. And then to your point about being anal or whatever, it, it really comes down to like, do you want to make the big bucks? Right. Are you trying to do arenas and stadiums? Are you trying to like, like when you go to Austin, where all the, a lot of the big L.A. comics are at now. When you go to Austin and one of these cats is in the crowd, they're going to have to know you got some chops. Yeah. You got experience. You did not start yesterday. You know what I'm saying? You're confident and you got some damn zingers in you. You know, and you got to... You, gotta, you yeah. got some zingers in you. You got some goddamn zingers. You have a unique perspective is what I'm trying to say. Your POV is refreshing. Um... And not that POV, you dirty Be bastards. Because, because the stakes are people who come to your show, they bought a ticket. They bought a ticket in Joe Biden's economy. <laughs> you got to factor in inflation. There's that 50%. People's wages are taking a hit. Like, factor in inflation to the wage. Um, people got to get a babysitter. 
people got to gas up the car. Their wife wants might want to get their hair, hair done, nails done. You might go to the barbershop. Whatever the case may be, this is a time investment that people are making. Yeah. Some some people do a trek. They do a two-hour drive. Some people make a weekend out of it. Some people rent a hotel room. Some people got to get a designated driver. There's a lot of shit people go through. So you got to do your best. The shit got to be funny. You can't go up there with some womp, womp. Well, the openers were funny. <laughs> that would Well, suck. at least the other guy was funny. Womp, womp. The amount of people when uh, when I went to a couple of shows in 2018 here in Texas, like uh, McAllen, Waco, that kind of thing, the amount of people that had driven two plus hours for a show because it was a closer show to them was at the time, like, it's not that it was, I didn't believe it or it was unexpected, but the amount of people was very surprising. When you were in Waco? Uh, Waco was one of them. That was, that was a big one. Uh, the people were coming just from all the different cities that you just weren't going to hit that was close, but two hours <laughs> plus, like, that's a mission. And then a lot of them were driving right back that same night, or some of them got hotels. So they're letting you know, like, hey, man, we have faith and you know what the fuck you're doing. Yeah. <laughs> I want to play this trailer and see if we could just brainstorm off the top of our head for later how you could come up with a with a trailer like this. The terrible, terrible secret. I'm always thinking of the joke. Don't think about anything else. There is a vast, vast hunger for new talent. And you can be it. And overcoming a lack of talent often makes you unique. Instead of conventional singing, you're going to sing in a different way. Instead of conventional dancing, you're going to dance your own way. In fact, if you start with nothing, the workaround can lead you to originality. We're going to talk about a lot of things. We're going to talk about my specific process. Thank you. Performing comedy. Hey, move that over there. We're going to talk about writing. <laughs> Editing is one of your most powerful tools. So that bit's not working. It's gone the next night. Now, what gets the laugh? Whenever it's the word that gets the laugh, I always question it. An ultimate goal of mine is to work clean. Well, then you should take off. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I never actually thought I was funny. You may think I don't have any talent. I guarantee you, I had no talent. None. Remember, you are a thought machine. Everything you see, hear, Experience is usable. Oh, what? Oh, I don't need Whatever makes you unique as a performer, do it and know that there's room for you. Hey, welcome to Steve Martin's Masterclass. I might have to go log in and revisit it. I, the consultation he did with those comics, mm -hmm. I, I remember that being kind of valuable and insightful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was some good quotes just in this minute trailer. Um, yeah, I mean, so mine will be like 80-20 rule, attitude, <laughs> right. energy, confidence. That's true. I mean, there's, there's a lot of good insights in there. And if people listen to the podcast, they'd get a lot of that too. But, you know, if you, if you frame it around like a master class with a purpose, people would even more so want like, oh, what, what's this? Like, yeah. let's peep game. Well, a lot of Mexican-Americans have tuned out on me because they think I'm a white. <laughs> they think I'm the brown face of white supremacy because he voted America first. Well, if they're America last, fuck them. Yeah, fuck them. You know what I'm saying, dog? Hey, did you listen to Joey Diaz? Freedom. What, what what about what about Did you listen to him on Rogan? I haven't finished it. No, I got to go back and finish. No, it was just cool. It's yeah. been a long time since he was on Rogan. Yeah, man, I miss. Uh, well, I, I tune into Uncle Joey's uh, joint mm -hmm. from time to time, but yeah, man, Rogan drops so many that it's like you have. I to, know. I'm like, God damn, I gotta I gotta pick and choose. There's only so many times, so many hours in the day. Yeah, you gotta pick and choose. Um, but Uncle Joey's a beast. I mean, everybody. I'm trying to think of who specifically. I mean, like Schultz. Everybody always gives him props. Uh, I've seen him live. That that was like some bucket list shit. Like, I got to see Uncle Joey live, see him work, see him operate, how he does it. You think he'll move to Austin? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Mm -hmm. No, yeah. he, I think he just loves Jersey so much. I know. Um, over the weekend, there was a couple of fights. Did you watch any of the fights or catch any highlights? Who was it? Uh, the UFC they had a they had a, uh, like a fight night in Vegas. Uh, Johnny Walker and uh, Jamal Hill were, was the main event. There wasn't like some huge fights on it, but that main event knockout was pretty crazy. Oh shit! And then Bare Knuckle also had uh, a really good card where they had the Let Me Bang Bang Bro Julian okay. versus um, Platinum Mike Perry, who was cut from the UFC about two months ago and made his debut in, in Bare Knuckle over where, the weekend. Where can you watch Bare Knuckle? 
Uh, I think it's on their direct website. I didn't. I didn't get to watch that card because we had the kids and we were doing other shit. But uh, B- BNFC Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship, okay. I believe. Okay. Or it might be like Fight TV where they have some of like jujitsu events where it's like F I T E dot TV. Mm. And I think the Jake Paul shit was on there, you know, a couple times. But uh, I wanted to just show you this. This is the Johnny Walker getting knocked out. Went 25 minutes in his fourth pro fight back in the day. I got him. love about what Hill's doing is the forward pressure. You got to keep Walker moving like this. Yeah. Look how it goes if out. You keep Walker moving like this. You got to dodge the crazy punch. Oh, shit. He went out on his feet. Go rewind a little bit. It's a bro. short, so we got to watch it again. Okay. This is the only highlight I could find. Okay. Hits him right in the temple. It was so fast, I couldn't tell what he hit him with. I think it was just a right, right on the left temple. Let's see. Boom. Lights out. Oh, so brutal, so brutal, man. Brutal. And then he got two. They, they didn't show the other angle, but when he jumps on him, he catches him with two hands still when he's on the mm-hmm. ground, already out. Mm-hmm. Yep. Baby Glock. Intense. Baby Glock. Baby Glock. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, nice. These were really good, too. This So Chad Mendez, also former UFC uh, bantamweight, made his debut as well. He, you know, back to the fight game, but also a bare knuckle. And uh, he was going up against a uh, a boxer um, who I bl- he didn't have a ton of professional experience, but was still like a boxer boxer. Thirty seconds remaining in the second round. Damn! Shit! Look at this! How quick it is! Boom! Uh, he came in kind of Mike Tyson style. Yeah, man. he's just a little ball of like fast twitch muscle. Son of a gun. And then the main event, um, Mike Perry. I, I think there's just highlights of the fight because it didn't. It went to a decision, but uh, it was intense, man. Shit, I'm gonna have to work on my fast twitch muscle. Oh, this is just him spitting out the blood. <sighs> I hit the bag the other day, man, and um, I feel a little beat up from it. <laughs> Cause then your back's so all sore and shit. Just lats and arms. I don't arms. know what it is. It just ah, I don't know. It just felt like I got like pop, like slammed on the ground. Is what it feels like. But that was the day before yesterday, and then yesterday the trainer, Sean Harris. God damn, he put us through the ringer yesterday, bro. It was like squats and like pulling a sleigh with a bunch of weight on it, pushing it, all kinds of stuff. Uh, jumping like little. Low box jumps with with dumbbells in your hand, so it's mm-hmm. just like ah, God. yeah. I mean, I just felt fucking beat up. You still keep the same schedule for like working out when you're on the road, right? At least you try to, like the amount of days you work out when you're home. Schedule, yeah. Like what do you see? Um, I Wednesday? I just enjoy doing it, so it, it's not one of those like oh I would have been scheduled to do it, so I got to do it. It's like I'm on the road. I actually have the luxury of having the time. Right. So it's one of those like take advantage. So that's how I see it. But yeah, we definitely try to work out on the road for sure. So uh, let's cover a little bit more of our 50% of political just because I came across Uh this as I was going through entertainment news. Uh oh. But figured this would be a good topic of conversation. Colombia Supreme Court decriminalizes abortion up to 24 weeks of pregnancy. And they're out there celebrating. They're going crazy. Abortion rights activists. So they decriminalized it. Was it illegal all this time? Yes. It's the first of its kind in, in a such a Catholic country. Wow. I wonder... Um, so there were only rare exceptions that they would allow, like rape? I guess. The, the Catholic majority country court ruled in favor of decriminalization. Well, yeah, the Catholic Church, man, they, uh, I think that's been uh, taken over already. That's been uh, it's merged. Been, uh, what's that's what's, a, what's elite, the word? Elite capture. Elite capture. Yeah, I don't know. What, I don't even know who the Pope is, but, <laughs> um, yeah, man, I go to Second Baptist now, brother. No, I'm saying I grew up. They would drag me to Catholic church from time to time, but no offense. I know a lot of people were like very proud of being Catholic. They enjoy Catholicism. Uh, some people are like very hardcore, deep into it, like Jack Posobiec, mm-hmm. um, who I follow. A lot of countries are very hardcore. I think there's a lot of value in a lot of that. However, 
my experience where they took me, it was the most torturous, boring, <laughs> regimented, nonsensical. Like, are y'all gonna quote the Bible? Are y'all gonna pull out a verse ever? Like, do you did? Oh no, you never went to no Catholic. Church. I did. I did the beginning before my mom went all Jehovah Witness. So before Jehovah Witness, y'all did Catholic. Oh yeah. Did you understand? Did it? connect did it resonate did mm. it make sense not a bit of it uh, the kneeling and standing and kneeling the, the, standing the sing, not, not the singing judging <laughs> did they even sing it's not i was gonna say it's not singing it's whatever the like a hymn yeah or they're, they're like yeah yeah the call and response right i'm sure somebody listening right now is like it's because you don't understand true yeah they're getting really upset right now and then we they took me to ccd i never did that though so I don't know what possessed my mom to tell my dad, like, okay, you need to take him and sign him up. And then he took me and the lady in the, like, we interrupted the class and she's like, uh, sir, like, not only are we in class right now, but it's almost like the semester, if you will, has already begun. So he's going to have to wait because we have two more weeks or whatever, right, to be done and it starts over. And he's like, okay, well, what has he missed? Why can't he just join y'all now? He'll catch up. And then she's like, well, we've already learned these prayers. We already learned the Hail Mary. We already learned our Father. We already learned the sacraments. Like, he's going to have to catch up. He's like, okay, he's going to learn this by next Sunday or whatever it was. Like, he'll be back. Let him. And I'm like, bro, you're making enemies for me. Mm. Like, the other students are looking at me. Now I got more homework. I got to go learn, memorize these prayers. And then it turns out the teacher was pregnant. Like out of wedlock oh. type of shit. And I'm like, what's surprise, surprise? What type of sacrament? Um anyway, I didn't really get into it. Uh we've Couldn't been going it. we've been going to Second Baptist now for some time. Bro, I'm telling you, we saw the Super Bowl over there. You feel right at home every time you talk about that place. It was Liddy. Um this last Sunday we went, it's the Ben Dr. Ben Young, he mentioned the Winter Olympics. He's like, Is anybody watching the Winter Olympics right did now? Did he say genocide games? Hold on now. <laughs> Hold on now. I see you trying to catch my drift. I was like, oh, yeah, here we go. What's up? Set him up. Set him up. Where you going with Chico's this? salivating at this I was ready. I was like, yo, the genocide games? Tell him. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on. Communism? We need to decouple. Tell him, Doc. From the CCP. Well, I was a little disappointed oh. because he's like, uh, is anybody following the, uh, the Winter Games? And like half the hands went up. And I'm like, oh. Why y'all why, why y'all supporting NBC and their sponsors of this debacle? Are they the only people watching? I heard there's like nine people watching. Yeah, I heard this worst ratings, but like half the hands went up, and he was just trying to make a larger point about like curling and like making a joke out of it. And I'm just like, you just gonna glance over? I know if Pop was preaching, if uh if um if if Pop OG, you know what I'm saying? Dr. Uh, Dr. Ed Young, mm -hmm. if he was up there, I, I know he would have been like, we're not going to let these neo-Marxists. <laughs> and he'd have thumped the Bible one time. Um, here's some uh, some random entertainment news for you to possibly roast or just say that's dumb before we get out of here today. Tom Cruise. Question for you, actually, too. So there's an article saying Tom Cruise, Tom Cruise's former manager recalls the actor refusing to speak to a waitress before because he was still in character. Have you ever known somebody who's that much of like a method actor or have you even yourself been on set somewhere but I can, and been like I can't talk to anybody? I'm still in character. I'm still the dark angel or whoever you played recently in the short. Have you ever been that kind of a person? You don't want to be rude to people on set. Sure. Um, again, I ain't got Tom Cruise money or Tom Cruise clout. <laughs> so you got to put that in perspective. Maybe if I was Tom Cruise, I'd have been like, look here, woman. I got to be in my role because a lot, you know, how many, you know how many people I feed off this shit? Like, he has a lot riding on that. Um, at my level in the game, I, I, I can't afford to have that type of reputation. So I, I, what I would do is, like, if you're having a hard time and you're trying to, like, really get in your mode, it's like, do that on your own time in your fucking trailer or your green room. Like, don't. Don't put that on others. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I guess it's Tom Cruise, though. He can do whatever the hell he wants. Yeah, all that method acting stuff, man. Um, I've learned a lot of cool shit from, uh, from acting classes and acting coaches, but it just sounds very, like, bullshit mm -hmm. when you're having to go that deep. You know what I'm saying? Like, like didn't... Um, who was the guy that... Heath Ledger. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. Heath Ledger. Some people speculated like, well, he he got really, 
he got oh, really for dark. Joker, right? Yeah, he got really dark, man. He went to a dark place. And what did ha- what was the rule, the cause of death? Man, that was like so pills, long ago. Like I thought it was overdose. Yeah. Like, did he do it on purpose? Was it like depression? I have no idea. Great performance, though. Amazing movie. What's the name? Killed himself. The guy that uh, was uh, Epstein's guy. Yeah, pimping out chicks. Uh, yeah, we didn't he, talk about that. Yeah, he coincidentally, he coincidentally um, strangled himself uh, while the cameras were down and the guards weren't checking up on him. So they later later came out and said that it's not that the cameras weren't on; is that the French don't have cameras at all in the cells. They had it in the hallways, and later you could see, or they claimed that you could see the footage where nobody was came in, in, in or out of the cell. Mm. So take well, that it's funny it how it's funny how none of Epstein's clients or donors were doxed. Nobody ever doxed them. No, none of their clients, none of their high profile, yeah. you know, the princes and these uh, clergy people, politicians, scientists, professors. None of their info never never came out. But you know, if you donated to the Freedom Convoy and the Canadian truckers. Best believe. It's crazy to think at all the progress that, like, if we we played that Michelle Tafoya clip on uh, RPT, but if we look at all the progress that we've made as like a as a civilization, you know, not just the country but in the world, to know that like we've made it to 2022, we're talking about metaverses and cryptocurrencies and going to Mars and shit, and yet the people in power are these crazy pedo kind of elitist people that have all the money, all the power, all the influence. And that's who's running the fucking show. You sounded like Alex Jones right now, sir. You're absolutely right. So you're telling me the elites have a cabal where they run the show. I didn't say that. I think Time Magazine said that. So you're telling me that uh, pedophilia, they're trying to normalize it right now. I'm not trying to say that. They have said that themselves. If you just kind of read between the lines, you know. So you're telling me to build back better and the World Economic Forum. Is in cahoots. Bill Back Better was dead on arrival. There's nothing about Bill Back Better. So you're telling me this virus did not come from bat soup? Because um, you're sounding crazy right now, brother. You sounding very right wing. I don't know. Bat soup, uh, a pangolin, all these kind of conspiratorial Wait, things. Are you telling me it came out of a level four PLA weapons lab? One can't say that it came out of there, but one can speculate that it may have originated there. Okay. Okay. So now the science has changed. Got it. Does the science change these days? The science has changed. Okay. Just Move making on. sure. Some people say that science doesn't, it's just, it's, it's what it is and it never changes. Nothing to see here. Nothing folks. to see here. Move along. Nothing to see here. But, uh, uh, get ready for your fourth booster. Is um, it four? I think it's fifth. I think, are they on fifth now? I believe it's okay. fifth. Okay. Well, they're on the fifth one now. Crazy times. They're man. on the fifth one now. Um, what's, but let, let's end on this. Your most exciting part, or the most exciting part about starting a new tour. You know, every, <laughs> go, ahead, go ahead. Well, every year, you know, you get to you get to start anew in a sense, right? Maybe some material crosses over a little bit, and then you add to it and you refine it and polish it. But you're starting anew with a new name, a whole new energy, a whole new mission. In this case, possibly even a whole new fan segment base? of fan audience. Base? Yes, <laughs> yes, 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 yes. What's uh, the most exciting part of it all? Well, the main part is uh, making some money. You know, Damn. you know, cause bills and stuff like that. You know, that's a reality. Everybody got bills. Vala's little, but she requires a lot. Valentina, you know what I'm saying? We, you know, we got children. We got mouths to feed. Uh, and in Biden's economy, you got to factor in inflation. Uh, my Facebook is not monetized. Uh, I'm on my second YouTube. It's barely monetized. Um, most of my Mexican American fan base believes I'm crazy. <laughs> but I'm I'm excited to um, you know, just when when you're when you're one year older, a little bit more mature, you're just more seasoned, you've been doing it longer. I'm excited to see, you know, just just how um, how all that manifests. Like, like Americans, man, we, we've been through a rough ride this yeah. past two years, you know, easy. Just from the division. I mean, they're trying to, like, frame Joe Rogan as a crazy fucking right-wing Nazi and so on. So... It's just interesting to see what the, the zeitgeist, the energy, the vibe. Like, what kind of stuff am I going to be able to say? What am I allowed to say? Uh, wh- what stuff are you allowed to say in America these days on stage uh, without being arrested, <laughs> without bail, the crowdsourcing funds being frozen? Luckily, we're not there yet, right? Donors getting doxxed. I mean, I think we're right around the corner from that. Well, I mean, imagine being in Canada where you could be one of those comedians that was, uh, you know, taken in or taken down for saying something on stage. They did that already? Oh, yeah. That's happened. Mm. There's been plenty of comedians that have, have said, like Canadian comedians that said that they, 
I don't know if they got put in jail, but they got fined or they got some kind of the repercussions for some of the jokes that they had because they didn't they didn't like what they said. So they don't have freedom of speech. No. Okay. No, they don't. I wonder what their what their laws are. It's you when say it comes well, to speech. You'll you'll know when we tell you. Don't 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 go against the regime. Yeah. Don't get out of line. Um, I'm tempted to do more jokes that have to do with what's going on today. Like really, I mean, there's got to be at least 20, you know what I mean? I don't know if it's five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes of just like, there's a lot to roast right now. There's, yeah. a, lot, there's a lot to talk about. I'm looking forward to like getting more feedback from podcast listeners, you know, actually meeting members of the, the uh, people that I talk to every day on the discord, uh, everything just coming full circle. Um, hopefully more like freedom, love and patriots. Cause that's not a bad word. Uh, showing up, showing out, you know what I mean? making their presence felt supporting you know what they believe in uncensored unfiltered comedy hell yeah chingobling.com for the tickets the tour merch is up there all the links for the patreon and the podcast are up there yes sir don't sleep don't be one of those closed-minded mexican americans that is still on motherfucking the view and, and john leguizamo and shit but and, white people you know blaming white people for every goddamn thing uh brown people stop it you also have privilege. There's a type of privilege called American privilege. Uh, your parents might have immigrated here to give you a better opportunity. You have free speech. You have capitalism on your side. Stop being a little dweeb and uh, stop being one of those govern me harder daddy type people. Well, on that note, I'm going to go make another hot toddy and try to clear up the rest of this raspiness. So a hot toddy includes uh, what kind of liquor? Bourbon? What is that? Yeah, uh, bourbon. Uh, right now, it's it's Old Granddad is the name of the one I'm drinking. It's really good. It's really inexpensive if you like good uh, a good whiskey. It's like 15 bucks. Does it help? One. Does it help? Oh, dude. And it's a warm drink. Yeah, right? it's a warm drink. I forgot exactly how it's made, but uh, it's uh, I think it's honey. Lemon. Lemon. And then your choice of... Like of, a tea. Like a tea, yeah. And then the fucking bourbon. Yeah, yeah bitch. because... You know, you about to hit it up early like that, my G? It's one o'clock in the afternoon. It's twelve forty, my G. It's five o'clock somewhere. Okay. <laughs> so how how was your time with uh your um the fam was out of town? It was uh it was not bad. I just caught up on research, read stuff, uh worked on some stuff for souls. Did you get bored after a while? Yeah, I didn't. I washed my car. I did all kinds of stuff. Oh, you didn't? Yeah. Bad. No, I didn't get bored at all. I hope your wife didn't hear that. No, I told her straight up. I was like, man, it's great. It because here's, here's she's my, like you miss me no it was great yeah not at all oh i got a lot of stuff done you didn't get bored nope not one bit straight up because here's the thing and let me ask you this last question do you are you somebody that needs alone time need alone time yeah i need to go to the studio and i need to go to jujitsu no okay, somebody that enough. needs alone time like i have uh friends who are super introverted and let's say that their partner is like more on the extroverted side and they, I mean, sometimes I like to run errands on my own. I, yeah, totally, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. But, uh, and Don's not like this, and I'm not like this either. Like, we have friends, though, mutual friends that are couples that, like, she needs her time alone, you know, from her husband or whatever. Mm -hmm. And she'll, like, okay, hey, um, I just need some alone time. I'm going to take Saturday as, like, my, I'm just going to go all day. I need, I'm going to go do this. Don't I'm do fuck that. with me. Yeah, just, you know, if you, it's something, if you really need something, like, call me or text me or something. So she's telling her boyfriend or husband yeah. that they're annoying. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Yeah. You get on my goddamn nerves. <laughs> I don't, I'm not the kind of person that needs that kind of alone time, but if it's given to me, I, will, I welcome yeah. it for sure. Yeah, like sometimes I'd be like, oh man, I gotta go check up on the Katie house oh, by myself. Oh no. Maybe go eat at El Rey Taqueria, maybe get some Cuban food, oh. maybe stop, get a Vietnamese iced coffee, oh, like listen to my podcast uninterrupted, like nobody talking over my what podcast. A nightmare. I could jam out, I could just like <laughs> scroll social media. Case in point. Case in motherfucking point. That's right. That's oh, my wife didn't hear that. Check out my wife's podcast. It's called uh, Red Pill Tamales. No. Pink Pill Tamales. Yeah, yeah. Now, hers is called Her Lounge Podcast. If you if you haven't gotten enough of Rob and yeah, his right. voice. Yeah. yeah. His yeah. illustrious voice. Make sure you go tune into that. Thanks to you guys. There are some people on the Patreon or in our Discord that listen to it. They also have a Discord. They also have a Patreon. They do. That's all ladies, though. All, yeah. the, all the chicks in there. All the chicks. All the wives complaining about their husbands, I'm sure. We might want to go spy on that. We could. We could easily. We yeah. should. Yeah. I'll give you the login. <laughs> I know somebody that uh, yeah. got access. Make it happen. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. This was Chingo Chats. Do not forget, man, join the newsletter at chingobling.com. There's also new vlogs dropping every fly, fly day. Fly day. Remix. Fly day. Vroom, vroom, vroom. I'm trying to get better at the vlogging. Uh, I'm trying to like start documenting. Like As soon as I turn it in on Friday, which I was late, 
I'm always late. Um, basically, like as soon as you turn one in, start documenting for the next one so that when Thursday comes comes along, you already got just a ton of stuff. So thank you guys so much. I'll see you on the road. Raleigh, North Carolina, February 27th. McAllen, March 5th. And the rest of the info, chingobling.com. Peace.